This week we've got big news for original Nintendo lovers, yet another Raspberry Pi competitor, a little bit of trouble in the Node.js house, and we launched a capsule into space. Again. Okay, welcome everyone to another episode of Micro News. Thanks for joining us this week. I want to start the show off with a quick shout out to Eric Anderson, one of the new subscribers on the YouTube channel and has been getting into the comments. So thanks, Eric, for contributing and we appreciate having you. All right, we got to hop into the news this week because we have got a lot of stuff that has gone on and need to get through it quick. The first thing. I have to mention it, it doesn't really fit with the rest of the show of embedded systems and things like that, but we're talking original Nintendo Entertainment System here, people. We gotta put it in the news, because this week on Kickstarter, one of the big projects, one of the popular projects, was the NES Blinking Light Win. For those of you who are old enough to have owned an original Nintendo, uh, I'm sure like I do, you have plenty of memories of Tech Mobile, Blades of Steel, Contra, I mean, come on, lots of good things there. Anyway, you also know that you had the blinking light problem. After, I don't know how long, a year or so of owning your Nintendo, you put a cartridge into it, you push it down, you hit the power button, and you get the little blinking LED on the front. Uh, and there are all sorts of ways that we learned how to fix this. You blow on the cartridge, you shove stuff in the thing to hold it at just the right depth. Anyway, a lot of that was just things we made up, some of it really did help, most of it really didn't, it was just luck of the draw. Anyway, the Kickstarter project that was released has set out to fix this. They have made a card adapter, or are looking to make a card adapter. Uh, they're looking to raise $15,000 for this that you can swap out of your original Nintendo if you still have it, and it basically promises to fix the blinking light issue. So that is a really, really cool thing. Uh, I have backed that project. If you have an original Nintendo, I recommend you hop over and take a look at the project and see if you want to back it. Big news for Nintendo lovers. All right, moving on. I said I'd follow up on the Spark Fun Edison blocks uh, that were supposed to be released. We had that tweet a few episodes ago that they were in manufacturing. Well, the starter bundle for uh, Spark Fun. Uh, from SparkFun for the Intel Edison blocks was released this week. It is currently sold out, but we're still missing most of the blocks. There are a few. There's a GPIO, a console, an I squared C block, but most of the blocks are still not available. They're still in pre-order. There are a few, like I said, of those uh, those three that I mentioned that are still available. If you want over, want to hop over and grab some. Um, and I did uh, tweet out to SparkFun. They said it's possible but not likely that we'll see these before Christmas so I will continue to keep you posted as soon as those are available so you can hop on those and play around more with your Intel Edison if you have one. Okay we have a new Raspberry Pi rival competitor. All the things that people say whenever any new little single board computer comes out but this week it's the CI20 and this is coming from the company that makes some of the chips that go in your beloved Apple products. They have made a, you know, they say credit card size computer to compare it to the Pi, but it's really not that small. It's a little bigger. Um, let's talk about some of the specs on this. This is the CI20. It's got a faster processor. We're sitting at about 1.2 uh, gigahertz. Dual core, four gigs of onboard flash. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. This thing was all the rage this week on Twitter. We see some of these all the time. This is the new Raspberry Pi killer. Everybody's looking for some good news stories. Bottom line is the Raspberry Pi is such a big movement. It's got so much backing from education. I mean, the community is just huge and it's gonna be tough for somebody to come in and displace them. But CI20 is throwing its hat into the ring and it's going to try. Um, I do wanna pick on Lifehacker a little bit here for a minute because this is what they had to say. And I'll link this article up down below. It says, for some people, the Pi's lack of basic features like Wi-Fi make it a bit intimidating. The creator CI20 hopes to appeal to those who want a bit more from the Pi. And I just don't understand this. I'm gonna reach down here. You know, when people say, oh, this has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, 
what do these people think that means? Like you're just gonna plug it in and it's gonna magically connect to your Wi-Fi at home? I mean, you're still gonna have to configure this stuff. You're gonna still have to figure that stuff out. And you know, I I'm just gonna, I got a Raspberry Pi here in one of my serial case boxes. You know what I have to do to add Wi-Fi to it? I take this $7 thing right here, do that and I'm done. It's got Wi-Fi now. And so I don't know why people are making such a big deal of this. Um, there's such a community around this and uh, you know, I don't know, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. I can add those in 10 seconds on this for very low cost. Um, so anyway, that's another thing. The, uh, the CI-20 is gonna run you around $65. It is available for pre-order if you wanna check that out. I'll link the site up down below. Uh, you can head over uh, to their site and order it. Should be available around uh, January timeframe. Okay, trouble this week in the Node.js community. Uh, Node.js uh, is, is a open source project that is run by Joyent and beloved by lots of developers out there for creating uh, backend. You can write in JavaScript. Um, you know, it's the Tessel uh, embedded platform supports it. And so, but this week, five of the top seven contributors, uh, and it wasn't this week, but this is the big news this week, five of the top seven contributors decided they wanted to fork the project and start io.js. And so there's a bit of a disagreement with how they think that the project should be handled with input from the community and how Joyent, the corporate entity that oversees the open source project, thinks it should be run. So a little trouble in the node house, and it'll be interesting to see over the next few months which way people lean. Um, Already we've had a couple big companies say that they're going to switch over to io.js. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops. It'll be interesting to see how it affects platforms like the Tessel that run JavaScript. So we'll keep an eye on that and keep you posted. And that brings us to this week's installment of Tweet of the Week. And real quick, I want to give a short piece of news that segues into the Tweet of the Week, and that was the Orion launch that happened. It got scrubbed earlier in the week uh, because of some weather and a boat not being where it was supposed to be. But eventually we were able to get that launched. I say we like I had anything to do with it. It was launched, did a couple of spins around the Earth at a high orbit, and then splashed back down in the Pacific. Uh, I want to poke a little bit of fun at NASA here for a second. The announcer that was sort of play calling the launch uh, said, America has driven a golden spike as it crosses a bridge into the future. Kind of as if we didn't do this already like 40 years ago. I mean, I really think of this more as we took the bike out of the garage, we dusted it off, made sure that we still knew how to ride it. Uh, still very cool launching Orion, seeing the capsules uh, coming back and launching those into higher orbits. So very cool stuff happening. A lot of exciting things in space programs happening lately. So cool stuff. Uh, anyway, like I said, that segues into the tweet of the week coming from Aaron this week. Uh, speaking of scrubbing the launch, Aaron had to say, uh, not quite as simple as yelling, fired up, Chewy, let's get out of here. And uh, so true, you know, people were really hoping the launch was going to happen. And then, you know, a lot of different things were happening. And you got to remember, so many people are involved in this and so many systems are running. They don't want to take any chances. So uh, just a reminder that space travel still is not a trivial act and uh, does take quite a bit of effort and preparation. So thanks, Aaron, for the tweet. Appreciate it. And that does it for this week's episode of Micro News. Really appreciate everybody joining in. Once again, I apologize about the background. You can see I got a wall coming up here. I got, look at this, I got wires just hanging around. Hopefully it'll be cleaning up as the weeks go on as I get more stuff uh, put in and installed. So, okay, real quick before we end here, we'd just like to throw out a question of the day concerning the Node.js and IOJS uh, divide. And that's, uh, have you picked a side? Are you going to stick with Node.js or are you going to move to IOJS? We'd love to hear what you think down in the comments. Anyway, again, have a great week and, um, you know, subscribe and stuff. See you guys next week.